So this is third and six. Mahomes throws the cross. It is intercepted on the deflection. Brian Branch, the rookie, ties the game with his first NFL touchdown. From the one, left-hand catch by Mahomes on the snap. Scanning, open for the touchdown, it's Rice. to the end zone for the touchdown. Mike, the only time you can get a ticket for a Lions game this year is when they're on the road. That's right. That's, <laughs> That's right. it. Uh, you've got to be happy for this team. You've got to be happy for this organization. They have old school techniques with modern play design. The Detroit Lions start the 2023 season in style going to Arrowhead and coming out of there with a 21-20 win over the defending champion Chiefs, a shorthanded Chiefs team that looked shorthanded when it mattered most. And how about this? Dan Hans is here with Greg Rosenthal and Mark Sessler. Boys, the, the sight of Jared Goff running out the clock, waving his arms, imploring Fans who have traveled from Michigan and other areas of the Midwest to celebrate a Lions team they believe in. That is a hell of a way to start the season for the Detroit Lions. I, I feel like anything is possible. It, it, this 2023 season couldn't open any better. Seeing that, I mean, that's something we'll remember forever. I'll remember that week 18 finished forever. And I know that we had a whole playoff run after that, but that was the last time we saw these lines for the first time in a big spot on NBC. And they come through and they end Aaron Rodgers' Packers career. What do they do the next time on TV? They go to Kansas City and their fans show up in such big numbers that at the end of the stadium, at the end of the game, they're chanting, I will never forget that moment. And we can get to all the particulars of how it happened and the X's and O's, but I'm just saying the Lions saw us try to take away that team of around the NFL, and they said, we're not letting go of your heart. We're too good. I think, you know, Greg, like um, I, I was thinking during this game uh, how this conversation would go based on everything you just said. But this, this is sort of what I have always wanted in football where I, I think that, you know, I bumped at times against the inevitability of Patrick Mahomes and the Travis Kelsey Chiefs, where it's like, in another world, in most worlds we lived in, like they would have marched down the field and found a way to win that. And then tonight, what happened, what an emphatic start to the season, kind of made me think that this year can be different because this Lions team that even 700 days ago we thought were uh, nothing but the lowest storyline in the league have become one of the most joyful storylines. So, I mean, the Chiefs, they'll bounce back, but what we saw tonight from Detroit was really a continuation of what they built last year. I think that's the most hopeful thing for a Lions fan, what they were good at last year. We saw that and more tonight. That is, we were at a Counting Crows concert, Mark Sessler, 24 hours ago, and I think you kind of... Um, accidentally maybe hit on a Durrett's lyric, one of the greats. Maybe this year will be better than last for the Detroit yeah. Lions. And last year was fine. Uh, last year was a big growing season. Um, wake-up call. Uh, I think it's a wake-up call for the Chiefs this game <clears throat> because it's a wake-up call that you can't rest on your laurels in any way, including your fan base who let Honolulu Blue invade Arrowhead. But beyond that, Listen, they survived Tyree Kill leaving that team. Why? Because they still had Travis Kelsey. And then Kelsey had his best season, arguably, last season. Kelsey doesn't play in this game. Hyperextended knee. You think maybe he'll get out there because he hasn't missed a game for injury since 2013. He doesn't. Mm. Chris Jones. Chris Jones isn't out there. And yet he's doing the Liam Gallagher at Oasis Unplugged 96 move, going up and sitting in the in the suites, looking down on his own group of guys, which I thought was very odd and strange. And I'm not taking anything away from the Lions because this is what's great about this Lions team. I love the way Dan Campbell coached this game. I loved how they leaned on their running game and closed out the Chiefs, who clearly looked gassed and were losing at the line of scrimmage. But even with all that, and maybe this is a little magic dust on the line season, and this is just the beginning, it was it took Kelsey out of the mix. It took Kadarius Tony having one of the worst games I've ever seen mm. a wide receiver have in prime time 
uh, if he catches that ball after they get the ball near midfield late in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs have first and 10 from the 25, and it's probably a wrap, but it didn't work out that way, and I thought the Chiefs seem very vulnerable, and the wake-up call is with if Travis Kelsey is not superhuman, who can Patrick Mahomes trust on this team? Because I didn't see it tonight. I mean, Tony, that was one of the worst games. You said it on uh, on Twitter, Dan, that a, a wide receiver, a skill position player can have five targets, one catch, a couple of massive drops, a couple of miscommunications, a, a play where it probably wasn't on him, but they, they ran uh, one of their sweeps, kind of a trick play on a second and one where he ended up losing three yards and they ended up not getting that first down. And that continued a second half of total discombobulation, really an entire game of discombobulation. In discombobulation like they, they had a couple plays at the end of the first half that got them a quick touchdown and, and one of those could have gone differently too but for the most part they were out of sync and yeah anyone that started tony or sky Moore, uh who, who didn't drop passes but he didn't make tough catches and mahomes missed him a couple times anyone who started them in their fantasy league like good luck i think this lions team we 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 know who they are, but they're a different team. The combination of their pass rush with Hutchinson, who was there, and their secondary making Mahomes hold the ball is different. But part of that, as you mentioned, Dan, is the receiver group for Kansas City. And to me, they're a little different too. You know, they lose Juju Smith-Schuster, who's a good player, and they're different at their tackle positions. And their tackles weren't good tonight uh, <clears throat> for the most part. It was half of the, the, the conversation during the game. So I'm not worried about them long term, like Nick Wesseling is texting us that he, they're going to miss the playoffs. Uh, but I think they are a different team, and those differences showed up tonight. I think Kansas City will I, – I, this is like – this will be the week of overreaction um, to everything we saw tonight. Fair enough. Let that week progress, but th I, I trust them to figure the situation out to some degree. But yeah, if you don't have Kelsey, they were a completely humanized operation. The one thing that surprised me a little bit, like I think at halftime, Mahomes had, and I, again, I think if he's going to grow in one way, like his mobility continues to be a problem for defenses. And I think at half, he had like 27 yards rushing, but no one else on the team had more than 10. And I thought with their interior line, this Chiefs team would be able to run the ball. And we've seen, um, the De you're right, Greg, that the Detroit defense in the secondary with Gardner Johnson and the rest of them, the pick six, like they, they did, those elements were not part of their team a year ago. And they were in these shootouts where what, they, what we saw tonight was a team that for the first time in a while kind of controlled the Chiefs, confused them. They had that one drive before halftime where Mahomes had three 25-plus yard completions. But outside of that spurt, they just couldn't really get on track. They just looked like they didn't have the personnel tonight to deal with Detroit's defense, which is not really what I thought going into this game would be the storyline. Yes, he, he, Mahomes had to run because um, he didn't have a choice. So I, I, it was, it's a great point, Mark, uh, Daniel Jeremiah, original. Six runs for 45 yards by Patrick Mahomes in this game, but I thought multiple times it was kind of because they didn't it couldn't do anything else. There was actually one specific play in the middle of the third quarter where they did go on for, a, I think it was a field goal drive, where in most situations, I swear in a third quarter of a game, Mahomes would have gone down. But he, instead, he stayed up to try to get that first down running. He ended up taking a big hit, and it was because he was their whole running game. That was a difference. Like, neither team could really run the ball for most of the game, but at the end, the Lions ended up mashing them. They pass protected well, and they ran well at the end. And at no point did the Chiefs ever run the ball. Yeah, Mahomes leading the team in rushing. That shouldn't happen. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Pacheco averaged less than three yards a carry. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire continues to be a non-factor for the most part. But let's give it up for the Lions because I liked what I saw. Um, for, and I know, like, for instance, fantasy managers, especially the first game of the year, but he just freaks out about stuff. Like Jameer Gibbs, people are annoyed. He only got seven carries in this game. Uh, but I liked w what it looked like. I liked that Ooh. David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, one-two punch. And s things I'll take out of this game is I'm not. I don't see the Lions as now a, a game-wrecking force who's going to roll through the league because I really do think this was a minimalized Chiefs team because of the injuries. And I, I should have gotten out of the lock I, oh. I, I, when I made the lock. Nice, nice job by you bringing that up. Uh, or we did. Wow, well, it's, it was a tough night for the old Zeuser. Couple of things. When I made that lock, <laughs> I honestly thought 
Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey were going to play. Sure. I just I just figured, or at least <laughs> Why did you think Chris Jones was playing? Travis Kelsey, I'll totally give you. Everyone thought he was playing. I mean, well, I, Bosa, Bosa these suddenly holdouts, playing. These holdouts, you know, there was reports right before the game. It doesn't matter. But, like, oh, he'll, he might even play in this game if they could get something. Nothing gets done. And he's Liam Gallagher in the suite. Um, <laughs> but, like, the one thing that I, I think will hold for the Lions, and they'll continue to win games because of it, is what we saw and what we talked about all through the end of last year uh, leading into this game. That offensive line is going to wear teams down. They are going to run the ball well. And Jared Goff, who has had an incredible kind of NFL journey where he came in as the number one overall pick, he was down bad, and then he was up real good, and then he was down bad and cast off to Detroit. Now he's up again. He's going to have – Another big year, I think. I think he's mm. this offense is going to eat with Ben Johnson. So, yeah, I, there's a lot of reasons to be excited as a Lions fan. Did they get away with one a little bit in some ways tonight? Did they get some breaks? Yes, absolutely, but they made the most of them, so good for them. There was a moment where I got concerned for the Lions because it's like I think mentally if you're a fan or if you're – Anyone that's observed tape or watched the Chiefs, it's like you're just if you give Patrick Mahomes even, you know, a minute and a half to operate, you're sort there's an assumption by many that he's just gonna go down the field and score the touchdown. And it was I think it was about like two thirty left in the game. It was twenty one twenty and the Lions got in this situation where it was like a big like third down call and they go they try to throw the ball where it's like this Lions team, their line just gets stronger and stronger as the, as, this, as the game goes on, which is why I think they have the basic like infrastructure to win 12 games. I really do. And I, I just think in that, they, I hope they learn from that. Their, run, their ground game is going to be the story of their season. I really do. I think like David Montgomery, I was never really excited about that signing. We'll see what happens. But Gibbs to me, like from what, from what we saw of him, I think he's going to be a massive problematic entry for the rest of that division the rest of the nfc i just love the way they're built and i think the reason that you're going to see Goff have like another season like why last year wasn't a mirage is because he's protected well they've got a great system around him a good ground game guys like josh reynolds making big plays amon ross st brown and at some point you get jameson williams it's like it is a huge arrow up because of what they went went and did tonight it's like it, this is what the lions were built to do and they went and did it successfully against the super bowl champions I don't know how you start the season on a brighter note. Right. I mean, they didn't get a good game from Goff. They didn't get a bad game from Goff. They got a normal game from Goff. He had some frustrating moments. And that fourth down that you mentioned, you're right. As someone who was you know, rooting for the Lions here, I was dying watching Der Jared Goff step in the pocket, which he did a couple times nicely in the night. And 25 of the starting quarterbacks in the league – just go run for that first down. There, there's no one in front of him. It's just not That's in his... That's the big, yeah, drawback of his it's, game. It's even, not in his yeah. MO, and it, it got knocked down, and he made a few really nice throws. He had a few misses. It, it all sort of balanced out. They protected him well. Like, he, he did his thing, but he doesn't need to be the starring guy. He's now got Gibbs, who you guys are right. I mean, his burst was just crazy. Laporta showed up, their rookie. Branch is a rookie, gets the pick six. I like that defensive rookie of the year pick right off the bat. It, it turns out when he left, it, it was just with cramps, so it sounds like he's okay. It's just they're, they're a deeper team, and Campbell's going to do some things that you don't know what's going on. He calls a fake punt inside his own 20, five minutes into the game, he gets it. It leads to seven points, but then later in the game, they punt on a pretty clear go for it situation on fourth and three at the 40, and I think he was thinking in that situation, and I understood it, that his defense was playing so well, which they did for most of the game. He was really trusting his defense there to go pin Mahomes down. Uh, and that happened to be the one drive in the second half where the Chiefs looked like the Chiefs, and they, and they made him look bad. And so that decision didn't work out. But for the most part, I love that he stayed aggressive. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the coaching decisions because I think obviously um, the one that was always, you know, it's the tone setter, as they say, all that. Um, fourth and short, like you said, inside their 20, they call the fake punt. It works. And even better, they then turn that into an 80 yard touchdown drive. And that uh, got. I think that set the tone for the game in, in, a, in a really positive way for Detroit. Even though Kansas City then kind of took control of the game, it seemed, they scored the next two touchdowns. And I thought Campbell made a bad mistake, actually, near the end of the half um, when they had the Chiefs fourth and about two right around midfield, uh, and there was a holding call. And instead mm -hmm. of keeping it fourth and two, 
they elect to take the penalty, Detroit. They back up Mahomes to third in, I believe, 15 or so. And then that began the Mahomes ding, ding, ding touchdown uh, that put the Chiefs in control. And then the last one that jumped out to me, well, the Greg, uh, Mark, you already brought it up. I, I was really surprised with 2.30 to play on that fourth down that you don't run the ball down the throat of the Chiefs because I thought the game was over there. If they run the ball, they pass incomplete. But maybe it wouldn't have mattered because maybe, like I'm saying, the, the running game of the Lions would have ended it either way. But I am not down with Andy Reid fourth and 25 deep in his own end <laughs> down 21 20 deciding on. on a, a day no 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 there's no there's, there's living a little greg and there's being completely just a suicide mission <laughs> when you have an offense that is completely sputtered out and you don't have anybody to trust if you're patrick mahomes it's not fourth and 10 or fourth and 15 or even fourth and 20 there's another penalty it's fourth and 25 that was a suicide mission and as soon as that's an incomplete pass you don't even give your defense a chance because they're in field goal range and the letdown to me was obvious they had, it was over at that point i did not have a problem with fourth and 20 because just How about fourth because, and 25 should, no fourth and 25 got a little extra no doubt about it and i think we, you know we texted about that a bit but fourth and 20 when you've got patrick mahomes and there had been a number of big bigger passing plays by Mahomes in this game where it's like everything about them tells me you don't give the ball back. If you're Patrick Mahomes, you go for it. Fourth and 25. I'm with you that it got, it got perilous at that point. And there's a sense of desperation, which you don't really get from the chiefs that often. I think they realized they were in, it was sort of their last gasp and it was um, yeah, maybe you punt the ball away, but I mean, with the way that the lions were running the ball at that point and chewing up the clock, like that first, when they went for, the fake punt that drive was what eight plus minutes. Cause I was in, I was in my world. We're like, Whoa, this game, it's like, it's like five fifty five on the West coast. And we're done <laughs> with like, we're like midway through the second quarter. It's like, I know that we'll get to a point where like the third quarter's an hour and 47 minutes long for some reason. <laughs> it always evens games. out. It always evens but out. It, it does, but it's like they, but their, their ability to kind of like take, keep the ball out of Kansas city's hands, I think might've led to that decision where it's like, We've got to hope that Mahomes does this, but I'm with you that fourth and 25 got a little bit bizarre. Yeah, I, I don't have any because of what you said. They, they probably aren't going to stop him either way, and they didn't. They knew the run was coming. They and did stop e him on the previous drive, Greg. It should be said. Not on a three and out, though. They needed a th they got him three on and a fourth out. and out. They got him on fourth down. They got him off the field. Uh, just, maybe not three and out, but you're right. They got the stop they needed. It's fair. I'm just they saying only gave up you, first you down. It back, one first you put them back in their side of the field. You put ten in the box, and you get stop and give Mahomes a real chance. It's it's kind of beside the point, though. I I, I don't want to get dwell on it because I think at that point the Chiefs had had their best chance. And not to bring it back to Tony too much longer, but it's crazy. <laughs> Tony had a drop right in his hand that that was the the pick six that changed the game, and then that final pass when they got the ball back after the fourth down stop. He is wide open. That's why you, yeah, that's why you go for it. Cause you, you had, you found a way to get one guy open one play and you think maybe you can do it one more play, but there wasn't many of those plays either. There weren't many plays that they missed. You know what I no. mean? Like they, they were, they were fighting uphill and uh, someone's got to take Dan's ire here. And it makes sense. And chiefs fans ire. It makes sense for it to be uh Kadarius Tony. That was, a, yeah, it was a, bad. A, it was, it was bad. <laughs> that was brutal was bad. because I think, you know, you, you didn't just lose the lock to start the season. I think you are the first person to ever lose a prop on <laughs> kickoff. You said the Lions wouldn't be in sole possession of first place. They're one to know, baby. Listen, you got to live wild. There's a lot of ball game ahead of me. And um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the all-time leader in the locks challenge or in the uh, oh, go get my lunch challenge for a reason. He had this I'm not ready. Gonna, this I'm is not going to let this speech. bother me. It's annoying. Um, I, it's, it is also, though, what I love about sports because – the 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 fact that everything I felt like five different things had to line up for the Chiefs to lose their home opener here, and they all did. And then credit the Lions for taking advantage of it. Really yeah. a good way to start the season, not for me, uh, but whatever. It's early enough in the year where I could I could handle this, and uh, and I'll move forward with my life. Um, <laughs> but like that was a good game. Like that, there's been some slogs um, in the Thursday night opener. There's been some sloppy games. That was pretty crisply played. And uh, a nice, like, back-and-forth game is a good way to start the season. Can I – like, one thing that bugs me, and I know that, like, if you're PFF and, um, like, they look at interceptions differently, but, like, that interception by, Mah by Mahomes, which wasn't by him, like, why is that called an interception? Mm. Why isn't there, like, a secondary stat that's, like, 
not quarterback related. Like, thank you, Kadarius Tony, but it's like a Patrick Mahomes interception. But it's like, what's oh, happening here? That's a great call. What if it's Kadarius Tony that has an interception? <laughs> like well, this. or at least something where it's like the turnover transfer. It's like an error in baseball <laughs> almost. It's like, how do we correctly, you know, attribute who? Well, who that's made what the an, I guess here? that's that's what they'll say. Like PFF and the like will say that's what we're for. They do, but then he, if that's we not mention be, that, we seem like giant nerds. So like, but I, I, like that's I'd a positive graded throw by yeah. Mahomes, who put it right on the money, and his receiver gacked. And it, to be fair to Tony, by the way, the previous game they played was the f-ing Super Bowl, <laughs> and he was a badass, and he made big plays, including the huge punt return that basically set them up for glory. So I hope I hope he, he bounces back, but that's going to be. I don't know what the media how and the fans seem to be overall. A, a, a more kind lot than maybe where I grew up or where we grew up in the Northeast. Uh, but Tony, I would imagine will get ro- roasted in this game. That, that's a tough spotlight, tough spotlight. It is. And and they are, uh, they're nicer there, but it shows maybe, maybe training camp does matter because he was injured the whole time. He basically didn't practice at all for five or six weeks. And they, they kind of forced him out there because they need as many weapons as they can. There is something awkward about, having seven, you know, receiver one Bs or whatever they are, or three Bs. I mean, but you get Kelsey back most likely next week, according to the NBC broadcast, and you get Chris Jones back at, at some point, and it, it will feel a little different. But the rest of the NFC North, like, they're all going to have to play the Chiefs too, and we'll see if any one of them beats them. That That's one game up Anybody that else? the Lions probably get. Anybody else get a little burned out on the NBC cover of Jawan Taylor's deep sets and early moves? <laughs> <laughs> that was like it was a fair point, but I felt like it was the only thing that we were like getting yes. in depth. I, the only thing that I liked less was the completely wasted, wired up Hutchinson family. <laughs> Just no pop, no heat, nothing worth. You don't you, you don't need to go to him if, if, if it's not singing. No, no more than once. Is it weird that to have the dad call the son Hutch? I don't know. What a game, though. Aiden Hutchinson, what a game. I mean, uh, he He's was good. one of the best players on the field. We, we, He's very we good. We should note that was a, a great job. I, I do want to point out just one last point of order before, you know, if we're, if we're wrapping up here because, uh, you know, this team, the Lions team, they stole our heart last year. They, they had our heart. And I've been saying all offseason, you know, why not run it back? Right off the top, I, I said that. And at first – how I remember it, you guys were like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe it was that night they won the game. That was probably it. We were all in uh, our, our fields. And then quickly, you guys just stopped it cold as a, as a possibility. Randy, I don't know if you got the song back there right now, but I don't think it's ever too late to change our minds and open our hearts back up to the Detroit Lions as the team of the Around the NFL podcast. This isn't sanctioned by anyone. We're playing this just for old good times. Come on, bring them back, Danny. Bring them back. This is the... Sometimes, Greg... How do I put this? I'm annoying? I love you. But sometimes a lighter touch would be more effective. And I feel like you're, you're coming so hard. It's like the guy that likes the girl... But like he's being so aggressively <laughs> forward about it that he's almost smothering her and it's it's making her push him away, mm. even though he's a good guy and maybe a catch. Mm. Yeah, I love I, mean, I love those lines last year. You know, I team uh, I, in a lot of ways, Greggy, I was on the I was on the bandwagon first covering him on, on Hard Knocks with absolutely, Colleen. Absolutely. And I I I'm open to it. You know what I'd like to see? Let's see what happens against the Seahawks next week. I'm open to it. I'm not shutting it down, Greg. OK. That's all I have. I'm open. Yeah, to like, Greg, and I think they, your analogy um, is really well put and can explain, <laughs> you know, a lot of my college struggles um, with women. But I think in this case, um, so many mixed CDs. You know, like, we're the girl that you're smothering. Where it's like, I, I want to be part of this relationship, but like, you're absorbing all the energy in the room around it. Where it's like, I actually do like the lions, and I was walking around my place tonight, being like, what a fun interesting fascinating team to do what they went and did tonight but i was like but Gre- greg is going to be so gregari- gregarious about it that like there's no room for mark to uh, how about leave some space I'll, 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 I'll dial it down a notch and we're lucky here even if they don't become the team we, we still have dan campbell and these lines in our lives and they are That's a big true. value add to the nfl but i'll, I'll keep both of what you said in mind and uh <laughs> okay. and, and look for a path forward 
fine. And while I am keeping my my mind open, it's more just in general. It's like, is there a team of around the NFL out there for 2023? Because you never force it. But, it, you know, there could be a team over the next, you know, couple of weeks. Uh, this month really is where it's, it's nomination season that we all collectively kind of gravitate toward. Maybe but the Lions, the Lions do. The Lions make more sense as a repeat offering than any organization um, that we've run into in a long time. So open minds and like just. But Greg, just remember, it's like if we're going to go on this journey, it's not you tugging Dan and I on, you know, um, studded leashes through a field. It's no. like we walk on the journey together. Like, <laughs> I mean, that it's, sounds it's, like something you uh, you might like there, Mark. Yeah, but not with not not with you. <laughs> not with me holding like. the leash. I got it. <laughs> Wait, what are you, what are you, precious boys, gonna do in week three when it's Lions v Falcons? Ooh, Ooh that's fun. Ooh, that that's... could be a team. <laughs> yeah, team of I think ATL we, you know, there's, there's thirty you know other what? teams to still honestly, see this weekend. Honestly, Greg, if the Lions spank Geno next week and then <laughs> kick the hell out of your beloved Falcons, I am in. <laughs> team of ATL. That's great. So if they can start three and zero with those wins, with those dubs. You got my vote. No, I'll say it right now. All right. You got my All right. vote. All right. Oh, but exciting. they got to do that. This is exciting. anything less than that. I'm not going to because I don't I don't really like running it back. I like the idea of it being one and done. The sequel is never as good as the original. Mm. Well, Godfather 2 is probably better than the original. Ooh, there you go. Notably. But that's an outlier. Richer, deeper. This is kind of a sequel. Getting back uh, on the horn with you guys on Thursday nights. It's been a been a couple of years since we did this. Yeah, recently. this was a big big uh, day uh, for, and then we're gonna it's gonna be part of our rotation. We did three shows today, so we had the uh, preview episode of all the Week One games that were not Island games. Uh, that is available now for you. Obviously, this episode, which will uh, we'll have a Thursday night recap every week, and the NFL Plus. Uh, premiere of around the nfl and nfl plus that is available probably by the time you hear this as well so those of you with an nfl plus subscription or international uh fans that have the zone uh go check that out we had fun that was good i really enjoyed our nfl plus premiere where we looked in the mirror I did as well. I had the game. I had it on. I had like three screens going. I got the U.S. Open. I got one screen of the game on the big one, and the other. There was a lot going on, but one of them's on the NFL Plus game. It's all happening. Very I just nice. hope, like you know, our employer, if you're if you're anyone attached to um, like the hierarchy above us that um, you know tracks what work we do, we are working hard. I mm, just please yeah. know it's that. Proof. Understand it's proof. It. It's proof. And the you know the trade off for me is like every time I see Eric Edholm's name on the scroll for NFL network. And I <laughs> no, think, wow, shit. he just had to write power rankings for eight more hours. <laughs> I think to myself, I like what I'm doing now. <laughs> everybody wins. Very fair. Uh, all right. Thank you to everybody uh, for following everything we do. Sincerely. That's pretty cool. You've given us a great life. All right. Well Until Sunday, the flagship show. Heed the call. <laughs> <laughs>